All right, everybody, it's an exciting um, moment for us. We're about to, I guess, take you on a bit of a run through of the Aboriginal Languages Trust's five year research agenda, which has only just gone live uh, in the last week or so. We're in February in 2024. And it's an exciting project for us at Impact Policy because uh, we've got to partner and work closely with the team there on the development of this and the Aboriginal Languages Trust is, is I guess, um, you know, close, close to home um, and close to the heart of Impact Policy. Um, we've got staff here that were a part of the establishment of the Aboriginal Languages Trust um, shortly after the passing of the legislation and um, language revitalization and culture is something that's really um, really important to us here as black fellows so to be a part of this work is is pretty special and something that we're really proud of so probably some of our proudest work to date um, that impact so I guess I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the research agenda um, partnering with the team there and developing it probably puts me in a good space to to talk to some of this as well so um, We've got our acknowledgement here. Uh, the Languages Trust acknowledges and pays respect to Aboriginal peoples who are custodians of country. They acknowledge their unbroken connections to this place through story, kinship and language from time immemorial. They pay their respects to elders past and present. And we acknowledge the leaders of today who continue to carry language, culture and truth to their people. Uh, overall, it's a general intro to the Trust what is the research agenda? The research agenda at a high level, one page glance, and then a bit of a background. Um, and then I guess three sort of key ways that we went around looking at this piece of work. We talked about the purpose. Um, it's coming back and starting with the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and then obviously any sort of um, key sort of grounding to how we do work in the research space, particularly with mob and in community and on country it needs to be grounded with really strong principles um, that underpin that research and that methodology so we talked to the principles of how that sort of looks in the language and policy space and then we look at our priority research areas that we sort of set on which was setting a strong foundation sharing community expertise improving access and influencing policy I won't spend too much time giving you an overview of the Aboriginal Languages Trust. Uh, for more information on the Aboriginal Languages Trust, um, jump on um, alt.asw.gov.au. Uh, quick Google search will pull up a plethora of resources that they've got, including their YouTube channel um, and social media um, handles as well that are quite active too. So the research agenda at a glance, uh, the core goal overall is to resource and inform the growth of Aboriginal languages in New South Wales. Now look, the thing about the Aboriginal Languages Trust is given that it's, it's established through legislation, um, New South Wales is one of the few places in the world that has legislation that recognises and reinvests into the uh, revitalisation of our languages. and it puts the trust in a unique position in terms of the opportunity to really inform and inform um, it puts us in a unique opportunity to really support um, and work alongside community and language revitalization and invest in that uh, amazing work that's already happening and has been happening for a long time and to ensure that uh, investment is there to, to continue to build that uh, but given its relationship within uh, legislation and within government, it also puts it in a unique position in terms of the policy space. Uh, we look at um, you know, language as, a, as a, um, a critical part of, of the Close the Gap agenda. We look at um, the increased need around or the increased appetite for um, Aboriginal language use in public policy and spaces and places. And I guess the positioning of the Languages Trust really gives it the opportunity to strongly inform both that that community language journey um, but also that policy sort of space as well in terms of its relationship there so um, but look overall the core goals are around advocating for the rights of language groups and communities 
supporting our community to own and lead our own research, increasing investment engagement and community leadership in research, increasing the resources available to support language work in New South Wales and to create a keeping place for language policy thinking and research. So I'll just talk a little bit in terms of the um, some of the reflections on this sort of stuff here and some of this comes down to stuff, stuff such as um, you know, creating a keeping place for language policy thinking and research was about working towards being able to have a um, a central hub and place where uh, language work can be connected. So, you know, we use the language of a keeping place here, but that could look like a whole range of different things, but essentially it's about the trust being a big part of working towards a central um, hub for where people can access thinking, learning and research around Aboriginal language, Aboriginal language revitalisation, Aboriginal language use and policy uh, and, and all that sort of stuff as well. Uh, obviously working towards building resources for language work for other communities to access to support their own journeys uh, and also to a, a, a core goal was around not the trust owning research and being researchers um, but about really trying to ena not enable but really trying to facilitate the um, capacity and capability of our communities to really lead their own research and to um, in many ways understand that they, they're already building their own research and evidence bases and how can you know work like the research agenda support communities to really be guiding and self-determining their own research agendas at a local level um, so yeah, that, this is a bit more of a sort of deeper reflection into some of the broader goals that we aim to achieve through the research agenda. And then, I guess for me, the principles part here on the right is really critical. So, uh, research responds to community needs. It's forefront at the top in the sense that we really wanted the research agenda to be something that uh, wasn't uh, static and that it had the opportunity to be able to adapt and respond to emerging needs across language groups in New South Wales. Uh, that our communities are the experts you know, and, then they're all, and that their knowledge is valued. So again, really critical to remember that regardless of um, you know whatever academic researchers might be involved in different pieces of work or um, policy makers or you know, public servants working alongside um, these sorts of pieces of work is that regardless of all that sort of stuff, at the end of the day, our communities are the number one experts in this space and their knowledge is valued and treated as such. Um, current and future Aboriginal language researchers are supported and elevated. So uh, really underpinning that principle as a part of whatever project and part of this agenda progresses is that there's opportunities to try and understand and look at how we can increase the opportunity for the development of um, the engagement of um, Aboriginal language researchers in these projects as part of just how they're happening um, as well. And again, this this next point comes back down to access. Um, if we, whether we're talking about um, data sovereignty, um, access to data, but again, it's it's the that community access to knowledge of and capability and research is strengthened. Um, so it's a broad principle, but it's about how the work. It also flows into the next one about translation. Um, but it's about the work that the trust does in research is accessible, it's, um, it's translated in a way that is applicable across communities 
you know, we didn't want to research agendas to be just something that produced academic journals, discussion papers, um, and you know, different research pieces, although valuable, and although will be a part of that journey, I'm sure, uh, weren't just gonna be the stock standard way that we communicated um, research and learning as well. Uh, and that Aboriginal research methods are centered and prioritized. So, um, you know, really trying to decolonize research methodologies, really trying to center our ways of knowing, being and doing in terms of how we determine what research looks like and not being afraid to move away from what has sort of been the stock standard in that sort of space for a period of time. And um, finally, that research upholds communities' language rights as well. So you see we've got some really strong um, core principles, uh, some really clear goals for what we're trying to work towards, trying to um, achieve as a part of this agenda. And we've got four priority research areas. So setting a strong foundation, sharing community expertise, improving access, and influencing policy. So uh, I'll start with influencing policy because that's, that's where we are at, at impact policy is, um, our bread and butter so you know at a broad space our research agenda hopes to work towards building the first nations language building first nations language education uh, building a languages workforce sector um, increasing investment into aboriginal languages um, informing aboriginal language use guidelines uh, informing place naming and removal of offensive place names and different work as well around Aboriginal language connection to biodiversity and environmental sustainability. So some really, you know, quite significant, um, I guess, policy policy um, levers here that we're trying to really influence as part of this research agenda journey, which is really exciting. Um, there's some stuff there that's already uh, in um, progressing to some degree as well. So it's an exciting time to, to follow that journey and see where that sort of goes as well. Uh, around setting a strong foundation, we've got the impact of Aboriginal language use and revival, uh, developing the language data baseline in New South Wales, uh, building a resource around language teaching techniques, and building a resource around an updated version of a New South Wales language map. Uh, so, you know, we have, um, you know, but we have we have some level of mapping um, and there's also a sort of need for further research to be done into building a, um, a more current sort of um, mapping resource of uh, language activity across the state as well. Uh, sharing community expertise. So again, this really comes back to some of these principles around our communities as the experts uh, and really looking at how we can um, build language engineering, community engagement in language learning and revival and understanding um, that as a process and language teaching as an integrated practice. And then the third priority area here is around improving access. So really trying to do um, some work into understanding Aboriginal community language centers, access to country for language learning and teaching and access to archives as well. So uh, that's the research agenda at a glance. Uh, I won't take you to, through the um, full agenda in detail because I'm confident we're already at uh, close to 15 minutes, but and this, is just, this is just meant to be a high level overview, but I guess the process we went through to get here involved the review of a range of different um, community engagement reports and consultations that have happened across the state um, looking at what was happening across across states and nationally as well from that language um, policy perspective it involved uh, consultation across the languages trust uh, teams as well as well as a series of workshops with um, you know Britt Jacobson and the research and policy team there and the uh, board of the Aboriginal Languages Trust as well, which is made up of a um, all Aboriginal board made up of language um, practitioners, speakers, uh, leaders, uh, 
as well. So involve the you know, consultation with the board closely and endorsement from them as part of that journey too. So, you know, we really try to work closely with the trust and really um, build and embed something alongside them that could really add some value for, for many years to come in terms of the journey that we're on. So look, it's an exciting time. The Aboriginal Languages Trust is still really, really young. Um, in its journey and its establishment as well. And so to be a part of some of this foundational um, agenda setting stuff is really exciting for us. So uh, hopefully this has been valuable for any of you out there that have a language interest or policy background in this sort of space. And um, if you have any other questions at all around um, these sorts of processes and journeys and how they might look, uh, please reach out and again like I said at the start for any further information around the amazing work of the trust um, if you're watching this through LinkedIn you can follow people like Britt Jacobson um, Claire McHugh who's the um, executive director there at the trust and um, Jazz Lee Davis as well who's the manager of research and policy um, so yeah overall thank you so much um, for any further information on impact policy you can follow us on LinkedIn um, we can follow us on YouTube uh, or you can connect with us um, personally as well um, and follow us along online on LinkedIn too so anyway hope you enjoyed the overview and the research agenda at a glance and yeah stay well bye